do you need to transform a date in string format into a java.util.date object? In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through using MuleSoft's data weave to convert your input dates in any string format and output a Java date object. This will allow your dates to be inserted into a common Java data type, or if you just need flexibility to do more complex transformation logic later on. So we're inside AnyPoint Studio, and for this tutorial, I'll be using AnyPoint Studio version 6.3.0, and for the Mule runtime, we'll be using Mule Server 3.8.5, Enterprise Edition. If you do not have access to the Enterprise Edition, unfortunately, you will not be able to uh, complete this tutorial, as we will be using the Data Weave component, which is not available in the Community Edition. So we're going to open up my Example 1 Data Weave Transformer configuration file. I've set up the skeleton of these examples beforehand to save time. All source code will be available through a GitHub link in the video description below. In our flow named Data Weave Transformer Flow, we have an HTTP inbound endpoint that listens on path Data Weave Transformer. From our meal palette, we are going to drag over a Data Weave component, also titled Transform Message, in between our HTTP endpoint and our logger. We have added the logger at the end just to make it easier for us to debug later. Open up the details of the transform message by clicking on it. If we knew what we were doing, we could just enter our data weave expression transformer in the panel on the right here. But we want to make use of the preview pane so we can verify our transformer without having to run the whole flow. So firstly, what we need to define is our input payload. For this example, our input is going to be a JSON payload representing a person. So let's define a sample input. Inside source test resources, let's create a new folder and name it sample data. And here we'll create a new file and we'll name it our person object we're going to try to create and .json because it's going to be of JSON format. And now I'm going to copy and paste an example I have to save time and paste in here. And what this is is just a representation of myself uh, a few, uh, and a few other attributes. And this bottom one, date joined, is this is the field that we're really going to focus on. As you can see, it's a string representation of a date. And our goal is to transform this string into a java.util.date object. Let's return to the data weave properties panel and let's click on the input payload and let's define it. So from this method, we can click the add button and let's call this type just for reference, a person. And let's select um, our, it's going to be a input payload is going to be of type JSON and we're going to use an example. We also could have defined a JSON schema file, and in that case, we would just have choose the schema entry in this dropdown. But we created an example, and let's just find it on our server. So we put in source test resources under sample data and its person. And the reason why we put into source test resources is because when we're packaging this application for deployment using Maven, it will exclude everything under the source test folders so that we won't have unnecessary file in our deployment archive. And you can see how our JSON file was able to be read and the metadata was extracted from it. This shows all our attributes and what type it detected in the mass. So let's hit select and there we have our input. And because we use the JSON example file, we can now right click and go edit sample data and the example we define inside person.json has been imported and is now being used as our sample data. And now we're ready to open the preview panel so we can start writing some transformation code. And let's remove the one panel to make it easier, move these things around. If we set our output to application.json, which mine was set by default, you'll see that our input payload will be converted into a Java object of type linked hash map. 
if we do the simple mapping of saying we just want the whole payload converted as is, you'll see that each key value pair of our JSON input object gets converted into an element underneath the linked hash map. And if we scroll down to our date join string, which we are trying to convert into a java.util.date object, you'll see that our date joint attribute got converted into a java.lang.string object and not the java.util.date that we're looking for. To get our transformer to convert our date join string into another object, we're going to make use of data weave objects. If we go into the MuleSoft documents for Mule 3.9 under the data weave section, we can see a list of all the objects data weave supports. One is actually called object, there's string, there's number, there's boolean, and just further below that there's dates and this is what we'll be using. There's a few different types of data weave date objects. There's date, time, time zone, date time, local date time, period, and that's it. Let's choose the data weave object date and convert our input string into it. Let's copy that and let's add a new element to our output. with the key formatted date. And for this one, we're going to pull in our date joined, autocomplete works, and convert it into our date data weave object. And as you can see, we got this yellow underline with the warning message, cannot coerce a string into a date. That is because the date object does not know the format of the string. So inside parentheses, we can actually specify the format. And to figure out what character sequence data weave uses, we can go back to their documentation. And on the top of the date sections, you'll actually see here dates in data weave follow the ISO 8601 standard. And it's link, and there's a link to the Oracle Java doc. In this case is Java 8 and you can see it's actually using the class data time formatter which you might be familiar with if you've worked a lot with Java before. If we scroll down we can see a chart to create the pattern to parse our input date and so let's go back to what it was. So it was four digit years first so year is lowercase y, so we're going to go for lowercase y's, and then there was a hyphen, and then there was two digit month of the year, so we're going to go two m's, and then there was double digit dates, so that's a lowercase d with a hyphen import, and then there was a space. And then the hour, so that's 12. We'll say that's 12 noon. So we're going to say we're on a 12 hour So, and then we have a colon in the middle, and then the minute of the hour is a lowercase m. And now you can see that our preview has refreshed and our formatted date has been converted to a java.util.date format. That's great, but if you look closely, you can see that the value is not quite what our input was. You can see that the time never got converted over. It says 00.00. .00. And that is because if we go back into our documentation for the Dreamweave object, the date format only captures the year, month, and date. There's nothing in there for time. Depending on your input date string, the date object may not be the best suited for your use case. Let's see what else we have to work with. So we have time, but that doesn't keep track of dates. Uh, time zone, our input string doesn't have any time zone. There's date time. 
So date time actually uses date, time, and time zone. So let's use that one. So we'll convert our date to date time. Wait for our preview to refresh. And you can see it's not refreshing, but we did get this yellow underlining with a warning message. So let's open it up and see what it says. Cannot course a string to a date time caused by the text could not be parsed. Unable to time zone, unable to obtain zone date time. Because our input date string doesn't have a time zone, we're not able to use this format. So let's try a different one. Local date time. So this one has the date and time with no time zone. And there we go, our preview pan has updated and we're still converting to a java.util.date format. And now we have the time included with our date. And just to recap, both our date time and date data weave objects were converted our string into a java.util.date format. Just to show that side by side, let's put this together as two different objects. We'll call the second one date time one or two makes more sense. Convert it to a date. And we get an error because we're using the concatenation double click and it actually wants to concatenate two objects there. So we put some curly brackets to denote another object. And now you can see that they're both side by side. One, they're both converting to the same Java date object. And one of them has the date and one of them does not. And out of curiosity, let's see what would happen if our input date string had a time zone specified. So we change our input date to have the time zone. Let's set some um, seconds and then and this is the time zone I'm currently in. And now our format, you can see here that we're getting errors and that is because it knows that it cannot parse the time zone because these objects do not know what a time zone is. So let's get rid of the second one and let's use the data weave object that we know supports time zones. Date. And when the preview window refreshes, you can see that formatted date is actually a Java object of Gregorian calendar now. So what Dreamweaver has done is they've converted their data weave objects date time when specifying the output to application.json to be a Java object of Gregorian calendar and not the java.util.date that we had before. And this is because if we go to the Java documentation for the date object, you can see here that the date class is intended to reflect UTC time. There's actually no time zone specified inside the java.util.date class. So in order for their time zone information to be kept, data we'd have to convert their date time object to a Java Gregorian calendar object instead when outputting to application.java. So let's revert back to our data we've objects that convert to a java.util.date. And there we go. Now you're probably thinking, great, but how do I get this date object 
from being an element underneath this hash map to something I can actually use. So let's go back up to our mule palette and pull out a variable component, put it in between the transform and logger message, and let's set a variable, let's call it Java date. And in our mule expression in the value, let's do payload.get. And we're going to pull in our first one, which was called, which had the key formatted date. And let's save that. Let's put a toggle debugger on there. And now let's run our whole application. So let's right click in the palette and go debug. And our application has successfully deployed. Let's move over into our Postman. And inside Postman, I already have our request set up. It's to our path data weave transformer and the server which we started on port 881. And here's our JSON input, which is the same as the person.json file we created inside our project. And now when I post this, go back into our mule and you can see our breakpoint has been triggered. If we click on the mule debugger tab, we can see just like we saw in our preview panel of our data weave, we, we have a linked hash map and we've outputted our payload and we can see our two new elements formatted date and formatted date two. And if we dig into them, we can see that the value of the key value pair is a java.util.date and java.util.date. And that's great. And just like in Java, what we do with maps is we use a get method using the key, which we did on this variable. And let's see if there it is. It did show up. So our it, our variable called Java date, and there's the value of it. It includes the time, the date, and it is of type java.util.date. Now perfect. Now we can use this Java date variable to do more complex logic further down in our workflow. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button. If you have any other topics you'd like me to cover, leave it in a comment below. And if you're interested in more videos on Nulsef technology and API development, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.